Dear students, welcome to EPG Partshala. This module is an extension of the previous module that is measure of dispersion 1. In this module, we will discuss relative measures of dispersion that is an additive pro add, uh, addition over the previous module. That is, in previous module, we discussed absolute measure of dispersion in which we derive the measure of dispersion in units. But in practical life, it is difficult to compare two data set that is of two different units. So to overcome this problem, we have to find out the relative measures of dispersion. So here we discuss relative measure of dispersion in detail and also we will discuss skewness and kurtosis. These are also very essential tools or measures for understanding the data set in a very depth manner. Hope you enjoyed this module and let's get started. In this module, introduction to relative measure of dispersion and different measure of dispersion are discussed with examples. Properties of different measures are also discussed with merits and demerits. There are different relative measures like coefficient of range, coefficient of mean deviation, coefficient of variation etc. Though this module can one can easily understand about which method to use under what type of condition. In this module, another important measure like skewness and kurtosis are also discussed. As measure of dispersion is basically used to dis discuss about the variation scatterness of the observations from the center tendency measure, we already covered the one category of measure of dispersion. In this module, the second branch of measure of dispersion that is relative measure of dispersion will be discussed. Relative measure of dispersion is a ratio of absolute dispersion with its appropriate average that is to find out the relative measure of dispersion from an absolute measure then the quantity that is used in the denominator must be of same unit that of absolute measure. Mostly it is considered as the average. The basic purpose of using these measures over absolute measures that we can compare different data set which is not possible with absolute measures due to its dependency on the units. Hence, the relative measure of dispersion have a great importance in statistics due to its property of independence of units. So the measure of standard tendency and measure of dispersion both together discuss about the characteristics of the data set but they are not able to demonstrate that to what extent the observations deviate from the center, center value that is whether equal number of observations are dispersed from the center tendency or whether the data is symmetrical about the mean or not. Therefore, it does not answer how many observations have the value below the mean value or above the mean value. If one is interested to know about the concentration of the observations around a center tendency measure, then it is essential to study uh, two more measures, these are skewness and kurtosis. These two measures are considered as a supportive measure for better understanding the characteristics of the data. Also in the module center tendency measure 1 or center tendency measure 2 and measure of dispersion, we discuss about different center, center tendency measures and measure of dispersion. Skewness is basically used to tell about the shape of the data, that is data is symmetric or skew symmetric. Skewness value help in determining the concentration of the observations below and above the average value. If the observations are con con uh, concentrated in the center, then it is called symmetric. If the observations lie on either side of concentration of observation, then there are two possibilities, either more than average value or less than average value. Hence, there are two types of skewness for symmetric data that is spot positive or negative depending on the concentration of the observations. We will discuss about it later. Another important measure is kurtosis, which refers to the peakness, flatness of the curve that can be drawn from the data set. It is basically used to study the concentration of the observations at the central point is whether more or less. If the concentration of observations at central point part is very high, then the curve is leptokurtic. On the other hand, if the concentration of the observation at the, at the center is less than the curve, then it is called platycurtic. Hence, center tendency measure 
measure of dispersion, skewness and kurtosis represent a complete package to understand the data in depth. In other words, it completely describes the distribution of the data. So first, delta measure is given as coefficient of range. This measure of dispersion is evaluated from the range of the data set. First range of data set is calculated and the formula for coefficient of range is capital H minus uh, capital L divided by capital H plus L where H is the highest value in the data set and small, uh, capital L is the lowest value in the data set. Now second uh, measure of relative is coefficient of quartile deviation. This measure is defined as the ratio of quartile deviation to its average value. It is defined as coefficient of quartile deviation is equal to Q3 minus Q1 divided by Q3 plus Q1 where Q1 is the first quartile, Q3 is the third quartile and we already discussed the definition of quartile in our previous module. So one can refer if it in, uh, to the previous module if they have some confusion about the definition of quartiles. So we are uh, here we we have some data and we try to find out the coefficient of range and co coefficient of quartile deviation. So first for that first arrange the observation in, in an increasing order then compute the range which is coming up to be 55 and coefficient of range is evaluated as 55 divided by 129. So in percentage we will get 42.63 and now compute the first quartile uh, and it is equal to 55 that is first for that we we have to find out the term that contains the values of first quartile similarly third quartile which is uh, is derived from the data that is 12th term in the data set in ascending order which is coming out to be 78 and the quartile division is derived uh, from the uh, value from the data set that is 78 minus 53 divided by 2 and after solving it we will get the answer as 12.5. So coefficient of quartile division is coming out to be 19.08 percent. Hence coefficient of range and coefficient of the quartile divisions are 42.63 percent and 19.08 percent respectively. So another measure of uh, relative is coefficient of mean division. This relative measure of dispersion is derived from the mean deviation. Mean deviation is computed as the absolute value of difference of observations from the center tendency that is mean, median and mode. Mostly mean median is calculated by taking deviation of observations from mean and median. So in order to convert the mean deviation measure into independent of units, units of mean deviation is computed as uh, mean deviation divided by center tendency measure. Center tendency measure can be mean or median but it, it is divided by the measure that is used for the deviation of mean deviation or from which the mean deviation is derived. For, uh, in the following data set we derive the coefficient of mean deviation and we have this data set is of ungrouped frequency data. So from table 1 we can see that in the first column we have observation and correspondingly frequency is shown in the second column. So first compute the arithmetic mean of the data set using the formula summation over fi xi upon capital N where n is equal to summation of fi. The values are shown in the table 2 and column 4 show the difference of each observations from its mean value. Column 5 is the modulus of the value derived from column 4. Now compute this absolute value with the corresponding frequency compute the arithmetic mean of these absolute observation mean deviation of the observation is evaluated as 8.2278 to compute coefficient of mean deviation first divide the mean deviation value with the mean and the coefficient of mean deviation is given as 8.2278 divided by 50.65 which is and the answer is coming out to be 16.24 so from table 2 we have uh, in the first column we have observations, in the second column we have frequency, in the third column we have 
um, product of frequencies and observation and in the fourth column we first derive the deviation from mean for that we we have to subtract the mean observation from individual observation and uh, after taking absolute of these uh, observations the values are shown in the column of 5 and if after put, uh, after product after multiplying frequencies with this uh, fourth column we will get the values in the column of 5 and taking summation the values is coming out to be 427.84 and now divide uh, this sum with capital and the answer is coming out to be 8.22 now there is another measure of uh, relative dispersion and it is standard coefficient of standard deviation as standard deviation is evaluated in terms of the observation unit and is considered as a, a absolute measure of dispersion it is essential for the comparison purpose that the measure must be independent of units the relative measure based on standard deviation that is independent of unit is called coefficient of standard deviation it's, it is defined as sigma upon x bar where x bar is the mean of the observations as coefficient of standard deviation would give in fraction so if we want to express our coefficient value in term of percentage by multiplying the coefficient by 100 then the relative measure is called coefficient of variation and the formula is given as sigma upon x bar into 100 the coefficient of variation is among the most popular relative measure of dispersion it is basically used to compare the variability among two or more data set the data set that has more values of coefficient of variation among two is said to be more variable and vice versa now in that in this data set we have uh, ungrouped frequency data so we have observations in in the first column and frequency in the second column so first calculate the mean of the observations and uh, subtract the mean from the observations and uh, values are shown in column of four now takes care of these observations and the values are shown in column of 5 column 6 shows the product of frequencies with values from column 5 now take sum of of all the observations in column 5 and divide it by capital N which is total frequency so now after that take square root of the value and the standard deviation value is coming out to be 11.190 so here we did same uh, calculation that we have discussed here or discuss in the formula so now for the coefficient of standard deviation the formula is for, uh, in the numerator we put the value of standard deviation and divided by the mean value and the coefficient of standard deviation is coming out to be 0 0.22091 uh, for the coefficient of variation we have to product this proportion with 100 and the answer is coming out to be 22.091 hence we discussed about different relative measures of dispersion as these measures are derived from the absolute measure to make them independent of units so one should know about absolute measure of dispersion in depth and the properties before applying these measure on the data set now we we will start a new topic that is skewness and kurtosis basically skewness and kurtosis are the third and fourth order uh, property of uh, for the for understanding the data in, in depth so first we will discuss what is skewness a skewness is basically to see the tendency of the shape of the distribution if the distribution frequency distribution of the data is not equally distributed about the mean that is the frequency distribution is not symmetric then the term that is used to refer this situation is called skewness skewness has many synonyms like asymmetry lack of symmetrical some other authors give definition of skewness as given below when a series not symmetrical it is said to be symmetrical or skewed this definition is given by Croxton and Cowden measure of skewness tells us the directions and the extent of skewness in symmetrical distribution the mean median and mode are identical the more the mean moves away from the mode the larger the asymmetry of skewness this definition is given by Simpson and Kafka hence skewness means the data is not symmetrical about the mean it is also be defined in terms of normal distribution normal distribution is the distribution which has mean 
median and mode all are equal hence the shape of the frequency of this distribution is like bell shape so from this figure we can see that we have uh, three curves one is positive skewed second is symmetrical and third one is negative skewed in the first figure we, uh, if we have positive skews then the mode is less than median is less than mean and if we have symmetrical distribution then the mean should be is equal to median is equal to mode and for negative skewed we have mean is less than median is less than mode so hence from the figure one one can observe the shape of the frequency distribution a frequency distribution is said to be positive skewed when the mean is greater than median is greater than mode in this case the value of mean is more than the value of median and mode also medium value is more than the value of mode <coughs> a frequency distribution is said to be symmetrical distribution when the mean is equal to mode and is equal to median in this case the value of mean median and mode are same a frequency distribution is said to be negatively skewed if mean is less than median is less than mode in this case the value of mode is more than the median and mean also the median is more than the mean now here we uh, discuss the difference between skewness and measure of dispersion as we discuss about different measure of dispersion as measure as dispersion measures are basically used to know about the variation in the data set while skewness is concerned with the concentration of observation around the center part of the data these are skewness is basically concerned about the shape of the frequency distribution while measure of dispersion are more concerned about the amount of variation skewness shows the nature of data about its center value while dispersion try to measure up to what extent the central tendency value represent the whole data set it is possible that the data that is not dispersed but has symmetric frequency distribution hence in this in that case one can say that symmetric that uh, data does not mean that variation is less measure of dispersion are based on first and second order movement while skewness is based on first second and third order movement now here we first give you uh, um, measures for absolute absolute measure of skewness these measure of skewness are basically used to check the asymmetry of the data hence these measure assume that the data is not symmetric otherwise the values of these measure will be equal to zero some of the measure of skewness are given as mean minus mode mean minus median and third one is q3 plus q1 minus 2m where q3 represents the interquartile range third quartile q1 is uh, first quartile minus 2m is two times median hence by using the above three measures one can check the skewness of the distribution as we already discussed that in skewed distribution either the mean va value is greater than median or mode or mode is greater than median and mean hence these measures just give you an indication about the presence of skewness in the data except when the values of these measure is zero in that case data is symmetric however these measure of skewness have limited utilization in practice due to this reason these are the first and the most important thing is that these measures are based on the units of the observation hence the values that are derived from these measures cannot be used for comparison purpose if absolute measure of skewness value of two data set are same it does not mean the data set are always same as it may be possible that they may be there may be variation between distribution in terms of mean and dispersion now to overcome these limitations another measure that is independent from units is used is called relative measure of skewness or coefficient of skewness now we will discuss some definitions of relative measure of skewness in these measures the limitation of absolute measures have been removed by dividing the absolute measure of the by dividing the absolute measure by the suitable measure or quantity 
the following are some coefficient of skewness which are commonly used first is carl pearson coefficient of skewness the formula for carl pearson coefficient of skewness is uh, mean minus mean mode divided by standard deviation and it is also equal to 3 into mean minus median divided by standard deviation the second relative measure of skewness is bowley coefficient of skewness the formula for bowley coefficient of skewness is given as coefficient of skewness is equal to q3 plus q1 minus 2 time medium divided by q3 minus q1 where q3 and q1 are a, are the third and first quartile of the distribution and the third formula for rel, uh, relative measure of skewness is carl's coefficient of skewness sorry kelly coefficient of skewness the formula for kelly's coefficient of skewness is given as uh, d9 plus d1 minus 2 median divided by d9 minus d1 where d9 and d1 are the ninth and first decile of the distribution measure of skewness based on moment this measure of skewness is the most widely used method here the measure used second and third order moment about mean this measure is defined as coefficient of skewness which is equal to q3 upon sigma power 3 where q3 and sigma are the third order moment and standard deviation of the distribution here uh, we are interested to find out absolute measure of skewness and coefficient of measure of coefficient of skewness by using the formula carl pearson bowley kelly based on the moments of the marks of 15 students statistics given below so first we arrange the data set in ascending order now compute arithmetic mean median and mode from the series and the arithmetic mean is coming out to be 69.33 median is 69 mode is 63 and first quartile is 58 third is 85 d1 that is decile which is coming out to be 49 and d9 is the 9 decile and the value is coming out to be 90 now for the absolute measure the values are uh, 6.33 for the formula mean minus mode and for the mean minus mean the value is coming out to be 0.33 q3 plus q1 minus 2m is, is equal to 5 hence all the absolute measures show that data is positive skewed because the value is coming out to be positive now calculate the relative measure of skewedness we need standard deviation of the data so for that we uh, we have to use the formula for standard deviation so carl pearson coefficient of skewedness is 69.33 minus 63 divided by 14.079 where 14.079 is the standard deviation of the data and the answer is coming out to be 0.4496 for bowley coefficient of skewness the, the uh, by putting the observation in the formula we will get 0.181851 so similarly for kelly coefficient of skewness uh, after putting the values we will get the answer as 0.0243 and the coefficient of skewness based on moments so here uh, first we have to uh, we require the q3 value and sigma power 3 and the answer is coming out to 0.0835 hence from all the absolute and relative measure of skewness we conclude that data is positively skewed although we also notice that different measures have different values for the same data set that is considered as a limitation of the measure of skewness now here we now we will discuss the definition of kurtosis kurtosis word come from the greek language with a meaning curved arcing kurtosis is basically used to measure the peakness of the frequency distribution it is possible that two data set have same arithmetic mean standard deviation and coefficient of skewness but still one has different concentration of values near the mode value so the distribution can have more peakness than the usual normal distribution less peakness than the usual normal curve and equal to normal distribution curve so basically kurtosis is a measure that compare the peakness of the curve relative to the peakness of a normal curve so kurtosis is basically used to measure the extent how the distribution is more peaked or less peaked than the normal distribution curve many author give the definition of the kurtosis as a measure of kurtosis indicated the degree to which a curve of a frequency distribution is peaked or flat top 
this definition is given by Croxton and Cowden. Kurtosis is a degree of peakness of a distribution usually taken relative to a normal distribution and this definition is given by Spiesel. <coughs> From figure 2 we have three curves uh, and uh, blue curve represent the leptocortic and uh, black represent the mesocortic and red represent the platycortic. So we will discuss uh, what uh, what is leptocortic, platycortic and mesocortic. So if the distribution curve is more peak than the normal distribution as shown uh, with blue curve in figure 2 then the distribution is called leptocortic. If the distribution curve is more flatter than the normal distribution curve then the distribution is called platycortic. Hence the black curve represents the normal curve is called mesocortic. So there are some measures of kurtosis. First is defined as beta 2 which is equal to mu divided uh, mu 4 and divided by sigma power 4 where mu 4 is the fourth order movement about mean. Sigma is the standard deviation. If beta 2 is greater than 3 then the distribution is called leptocurtic. If beta 2 is, is equal to 3 then the distribution is called mesocurtic. If beta 2 is less than 3 then the distribution is called platycurtic. Another measure that is used in literature is given by, is given as gamma 2 which is equal to beta 2 minus 3. Hence in this case gamma 2 is greater than 0 then the distribution is leptocurtic. If gamma 2 is equal to 0 then the distribution is mesocurtic. If gamma 2 is less than 0 then the distribution is platycurtic. So we have a data set and we are interested in to find out the uh, property of the distribution whether it is uh, leptocurtic, platocurtic and mesocurtic. For that we require the fourth order movement and the formula for fourth order movement is summation of xi minus x bar power 4 divided by n and the answer is coming out to be 71641.5407 and after putting the value in the formula for kurtosis the value is coming out to be less than 3 and uh, if you are using beta 2, if we, if we uh, require the value of gamma 2, the answer is coming out to be negative. Hence, using the formula for kurtosis, we can say that the distribution is platycurtic. To summarize this module, as we already discussed different measures of dispersion and the particular form is relative measure. And we also discussed that how relative measure is uh, introduced as we already have absolute measure of dispersion. So after that we also discuss skewness and kurtosis and it, its importance on how to derive skewness and kurtosis from the data sets. Hope you enjoyed this module. Thank you.